Good morning. I'm excited to be with you today for this important digital conference and honored to introduce today's keynote speaker. My name is Laura Johnson and I'm the Vice President and Campus Director at Delaware Tech's Wilmington's campus. Thank you to the Delaware State Chamber of Commerce for bringing together our state's business and community leaders to talk about our role in Delaware's economic recovery. The workplace already looks much different than it did earlier this year, and conversations like the one we'll have today are important for all of our organizations. At Delaware Tech, we are focused on training the next generation of workers to have job-ready skills and be adaptable to changing circumstances. Our upcoming speaker will talk about what type of employees and skills his organization will need going forward. So I am pleased to introduce the conference's keynote speaker, Eric Casey. Eric is the CEO of GT USA Wilmington with experience in leadership, multi-site operations, strategic planning, and crisis management. Eric spent more than 26 years in the US Marine Corps before starting a varied business and consulting career. Today, Eric will share the overall plans GTUSA has for the Port of Wilmington, taking it from number 19 in the USA to a top 10 port this decade. He will discuss the impact of COVID-19 at the port and on trade in general, and the forecast for the remainder of the year. So we're very pleased to welcome Eric Casey. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Excellent. My name is Eric Casey. I'm the CEO of GTUSA Wilmington. I'm just kidding, I paused there for a little COVID humor. That's to make Helena have a heart attack. Uh, everything's working fine on my end, at least for electronically. Um, so I I'm really pleased to be here this morning and to talk to you all about something that is uh, affecting everybody greatly, which is the COVID-19, the pandemic, and what it's really doing in terms of the supply chain industry, which is uh, near and dear to everybody's hearts in one way or another, whether you work in the industry, uh, whether you are a consumer of goods, uh, you work in retail or, or even in, in other markets, um, it all matters. And the interesting thing about the supply chain in, in particular, the maritime industry is it actually touches every facet of global commerce in one way or another. So it is directly relevant to what's going on. And with that, let me give you a little, first off, an overview of what's going on worldwide and what we've seen as a result of the pandemic that really we started noticing some shifts the end of November of last year uh, as China started to have some issues. And then flowing through to today and what we're expecting going forward, I'll tie in quickly to a little bit about the Port of Wilmington and what we're predicting is going to happen here and what has happened here. And then talk a little bit about as we go to our expansion and what we're looking to do for our next steps. Talking about the, the workers that we're going to have, the jobs that are going to open up, and the opportunities for Delaware. So with that, let's get started. Uh, in looking at the industry as an overview, let's start with kind of where the center of this pandemic was first noticed, which was in China uh, and what happened. So between November and February of uh, this, this year, uh, the eight major Chinese ports lost over 10% of their cargo in three months. Uh, so what does that actually equate to? That's 37 million containers that were not filled in three months. Uh, and that is a direct result of manufacturing shutting down so they didn't have goods to actually uh, push forward and export out into the global market. That then caused a stampede of other issues across the globe. And we started to see sequentially this grow, much in the manner that the way the pandemic spread it's the same way that it spread through the supply chain, where we saw it centralized and then it started to break out as those routes, as those hubs, nodes, and cells, and connectivity in that scale-free network started to transition. Um, there were some, some knee-jerk measures that were done early on to try to stem the tide of losses of cargo. They were ineffective. Uh, so if you look throughout what happened in China just in the first three months, overall cargo declined almost immediately. 
uh, at about 5% per month. Uh, and then it transitioned, it went through uh, both directions, both west and east. The United States started to feel the impact starting in the begin and the end of February, beginning of March. Western Europe uh, started to also see that impact around the same time. Um, and Rotterdam actually lost 20% of their cargo by April, uh, which is the largest port in, in Europe. Uh, and it, it's forecasting that it will not actually recover any of those cargoes this year. So they're looking at 20% down for the rest of the year. Uh, and this happens throughout all the continents and went forward from there. So uh, it, it's been a bit of an issue. What's going on here in the United States? So we saw a plunge happen, particularly in March, as especially as the lockdown went. And some of you were uh, feeling the effects of the lockdown in terms of not being able to get uh, some certain goods, such as toilet paper uh, and other things like that. There was a, that was a direct effect of the supply chain. Um, the warehouses and the inventory for certain goods went out immediately. Um, during the month of March alone, uh, for toilet paper, the U.S. consumer bought 40 times the normal amount of toilet paper in three weeks, which is why it went dry. Couple that with manufacturers not being prepared for that in a just-in-time inventory system, it left a critical gap that took time to catch up. That's why we had that long delay before some critical items were available on the store shelves again. Um, we're expecting the, the volumes to continue throughout this year as a, a, a decrease, uh, and we're not going to see the big peak that we normally see from August to November, which is uh, part of the back to school and then also rolling into Christmas with the U.S. consumers. So we're seeing a significant negative effect in the, in the industry, both in the container goods and also in bulk and break bulk and in different commodities. Uh, obviously in the oil commodities, pet coke and also in, in fluid oil, from March to about June, there was a significant degradation in demand. Uh, and that demand directly affected uh, how much would be coming in and out uh, in terms of oil and gasoline. Gasoline prices were down, uh, they're starting to creep back up. But the volumes, there was such a glut of supply because the normal utilization rate, particularly here in the U.S., tapered off to almost zero. Uh, and it really affected the oil industry in terms of what they were going to do. And then it put a backlog in their, their storage areas to support refinement. So it, again, it cascades all the way through. Uh, that's starting to transition now because people are, are out and we can discuss later for better or for worse how that's working out for us with the recent uptick and in, in spike in uh, in cases, but in terms of actual movement of money and, and movement of goods, uh, people getting out has actually seen a, a, a little bit of an increase in the economy that we're hoping is not going to fall flat again. Uh, to give you an idea from the shipping industry, the actual ships themselves, uh, we have something called blank sailings, which are when ships are booked to come in, whether they're on the line or whether they're coming in for a normal charter, and they're booked to arrive at a port. Uh, and if they don't arrive, even though they, they had a, a scheduled time, we call that a blank sailing. Um, we had over 25% blank sailings in the month of May alone, uh, which is a significant amount. That's about 350 ships that didn't make their calls on the East Coast alone. Uh, so that's a direct reflection of problems that we see in the industry. Ports around the East Coast are seeing uh, a, a lack of congestion due to having extra capacity available, but no goods coming in. So ports along the East Coast are experiencing somewhere between 20 to up to 38% of their normal volumes not materializing uh, in quarter one and quarter two of this year. So through June, uh, 20 to 38% have not materialized. Here at the Port of Wilmington, we've been relatively lucky. Our container volume has been steady, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute but we have seen a significant decrease in bulk volume just due to uh, the commodities not being available and not moving on ships. So that's, that's a significant uh, issue. We are expecting in the maritime industry, uh, cargo volume declines to stay up to 30% for the rest of the year. We're hoping for a recovery in September, October, but right now it doesn't look like it uh, with a lot of manufacturing 
starting to open and then going back and closing again because of the recent uptick uh, worldwide. Uh, so that's going to be kind of where we are in the industry as it stands. Um, as we look at what's going on here in, in this region, uh, we're going to see uh, the declines stay probably until, assuming everything starts to resurgence, probably to, until about November, December. So we're still hoping to have the end of this calendar year uh, turn out a little bit better, but for right now, we're not positive that that's going to happen. Um, when you look at markets outside of, of retail goods and you look at the bulk and break bulk industry, uh, one of the areas that people don't think about that's been affected are the mines. Uh, globally, over 1,600 mines have suspended operations since February and have not started back up yet. These are direct impacts on chemicals. They're direct impacts on road salt for uh, winter. So hopefully we'll have another light winter like we did this year where salt demand isn't going to be very high. But even our neighbors down to the south, like Mexico, they've seen a 17% reduction in, in mining just in the last two quarters because they can't open the mines due to COVID. Uh, mining in India is down almost 12%. Uh, and South Africa, has in their specialized mining categories, is down 10%. So this is continuing. Uh, for those of you that are looking for a new car, um, it's an interesting market right now. The used, the used auto market is down 70%, and the new car market is relatively flat. Um, there are new uh, types of vehicles rolling out to hopefully generate consumer interest, but they are seeing a significant decline in what they would normally see for the velocity of their cargoes going forward. And with that, let me tell you a little bit more about Wilmington and what we're doing here. So at Wilmington, again, our containers are relatively stable. We've seen a decline in bulk. Uh, we have instituted some specific cost saving measures and applied our focus to make sure we have lanes to get critical needed goods uh, into the market as they come available. For instance, uh, if there is a, a resurgence where they need more masks or they need PPE or they need hand sanitizer, we are opening up lanes so that we can make sure that we can support them across the board as the commodities come in uh, to the port to expedite getting them into the uh, into the retail market so that people can utilize them uh, as necessary. And, and we've uh, been working and had great, uh, great success in our collaboration with both the unions and also the state in being able to be flexible uh, and move product as necessary. Uh, we've done the same thing with our food stuff. So, uh, we want to make sure that the produce we get in and the food that comes in here goes straight to market as fast as possible to optimize uh, the, the time to get it to the consumer, knowing that the consumer is now limited uh, on their options for getting food and how much time they can spend out there. So we have changed our dynamic and changed our efficiency and uh, increased our velocity in order to meet those requirements as we go forward. Uh, where are we going from here? So. Uh, Wilmington is still on the path. We're doing, we're doing well this year, uh, and we are still on the path to build Edgemore, our new container terminal, our new 1.2 million TEU terminal. In the future, uh, we're looking at getting the, the dredging permits done now, and we're looking to get started as soon as possible on that construction and development. Edgemore in and of itself is going to bring thousands of jobs into the area. It also has secondary and tertiary benefits to the economy of new businesses that will sprout up besides the port itself, uh, in order to support economic growth, not just here in the local area, but throughout the state. Uh, it's going to open up avenues for uh, Delaware to export more goods, and we're going to be bringing in new services, new liner services into the region so that they can better support the efforts of uh, everyone here in Wilmington and also in Delaware to support the state and the region in giving them uh, new opportunities, new commodities and goods and services available. Uh, so that is on schedule. We're still moving forward with that. Uh, and that's going to be a game changer. That will be the first new terminal on the East Coast in years. Uh, and it will be state of the art, highly technical. technical uh, and we're going to bring in the, late, the latest and greatest that we can in order to make it the most efficient port uh, here on the East Coast and allow us to be a gateway not just to the region, but to the Midwest, and to about 50% of the U.S. population, which is in within 24 hours uh, of the Port of Edgemore. So we're, we're looking for a great big expansion here in the near term, and we are on schedule to 
uh, continue to move forward with, with work commencing on, on certain areas of it next year. So that gives you an idea of where we are in terms of, uh, of, of Edgemore and what we're trying to do. A little bit on, on where we are in Wilmington, we're doing well. Now let's talk about the employment and what we're looking for as we go forward. So as Wilmington, as the Port of Wilmington continues to grow, and as Edgemore continues and, and becomes built, we're going to be looking for thousands of new workers to come into the workforce. Uh, and these workers are going to be uh, our, our union brethren that have done so well here at Wilmington in making us one of the most efficient ports uh, in the region and really refining the techniques, tactics, and procedures that we use uh, in the maritime industry. So we're looking for people that are interested in a long-term career. These are, these are well-paying jobs. They're above minimum wage, uh, and they have medical, dental, and vision benefits associated with them through the unions. Uh, and these are, these are careers that we consider generational. For instance, we have several families that have worked in the port for two or three generations and are still working here now. We have grandfathers, fathers, and sons. Uh, we have mothers and daughters working at the Port of Wilmington, and we'll be working at Edgemore together uh, because these are life-sustaining, career-sustaining, family-sustaining jobs. And that's one of the exciting things about, about building a new port and about building a new terminal is we're going to give more people the opportunity to take care of their families. And we're going to have an opportunity for more people to come in to the port and to the local area and join the Wilmington family uh, as part of the community. Along with that, we're looking at thousands of new businesses that are going to spin off, whether they are directly related to work on the port, so some metal fabrication, uh, some uh, truck support, some train support, uh, other kind of mechanical and maintenance uh, teams that are going to be available to new restaurants, new grocery stores, uh, new retail shopping, uh, as whatever retail shopping shapes out to be in the new normal. Uh, all of these things are going to come to the local area, and they're also, also going to come to, to Delaware. We're looking at new distribution centers that are going to be forming here that are going to utilize the port to bring goods into the area. Those new, new distribution centers will open up for new retail lines to come through as well. Uh, and this goes all the way through all three counties of Delaware and into Pennsylvania, into New Jersey. So that will become an anchor for new business and an economic growth for the state, which is why the state has been interested in uh, working with us uh, in order to grow this part of the area and, and this, this driver for, for Delaware. Along with that, you're going to see an increase in, in people that are going to be utilizing the local education, whether that is primary, secondary, or, or college. Uh, they're going to be here. Their families are going to be here. They're going to need that support. So you should see an uptick of that, which then gives a, a better tax base as well for the state of Delaware, uh, which is a, a win for the state and also helps with some much needed programs that the state has been focusing on. It will give them a little bit more revenue to work with. And with that, that kind of gives you an idea of where we are and what we're trying to do and what you can see in the market. And to summarize, the market has declined. We're hoping that we see an uptick in the fall. Uh, we have not seen an uptick to date. Uh, it has not started yet. A lot of it is contingent upon manufacturing and mining, uh, opening back up and getting themselves running again. So it's a little bit touchy. These are unprecedented times. Uh, and there's a lot of uncertainty. However, we here in Wilmington are poised to be able to handle that because we already have the supply chain and we have the, the knowledge and the expertise in order to manage through this. So it is, it is not a time for uh, being negative or pessimistic. It's a time for being realistic uh, and looking at the optimism of what is to come. We're continuing to move forward. We're continuing to plan for growth. We're continuing to expect and, and demand that things are going to get better, and they are. Uh, and we're moving forward with that. So where we sit today, we feel comfortable and confident that we will be ready when the market's open to expand with the rapidity that is necessary to meet everybody's goals. And at the same time, we're also going to help lead the fight in trying to make sure that everybody is taken care of until such point as we have this thing back under control and we're moving forward to the new normal. And with that, I wanted to thank everybody for listening today.
I appreciate your time. And please let me know if you have any questions, please reach out to me and I will answer any questions I, that I can. Thanks.